remember me. Fabulous thing. 2024 seems to be the year of the blockbuster. First we got Dune Part 2, then we got the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the Fall Guy, and now we get a yet another major box office joggernaut with Furiosa. Wait, what? Well, aside from Dune, all these other movies flopped hard at the box office, including Furiosa. But why? Were all these movies that bad? And was Furiosa so terrible that no one came out to watch? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Now, I have to admit that I know that thumbnail was total clickbait. Was Furiosa really that bad? Like, enough to warrant flopping so hard? Well, that's just the thing. The movie was actually good. The acting, the story, the character development, and all the set pieces were all top notch. I really have no major problems or qualms with Furiosa and it looks like critics and audiences received it rather positively. So why did the movie bomb so hard at the box office? Well, to answer that, we kinda have to go back to the beginning of the dark age of cinema. Back around 2009, we started getting noticeably different movies, movies with more direct political messaging. Now, don't get me wrong, political messaging in movies isn't necessarily a bad thing. Quite to the contrary, a lot of it could be very good, such as was the case with the 1987 classic movie, Wall Street. That was a movie that had a blatant political message that attempted to curtail the excesses of modern finance. And it was pretty damn good. But around 2015, things started to shift rather drastically to the far, far left. The canary in the coal mine was the gendered bathroom debacle. That was a clear sign of what was to come for Western culture. And one of the avenues that culture shifts happen in is through entertainment. For the past century or so, that meant movies and cinema. The dark age of cinema really got going around 2015 and 2016. We started getting infallible Mary Sue girl bosses, men taking a backseat in their own stories, and lazy race and gender swapping of existing legacy characters. And we've been getting them ever since. I know that 2016 isn't that long ago, but eight years is long enough to condition society to expect certain things. Despite people absolutely hating infallible Mary Sue girl boss tropes, they've grown to expect them. So when a movie like Furiosa comes around, people expect it to have those tropes. But Furiosa subverted those expectations in a very positive way. For so long, Hollywood has been churning out garbage so that when a good movie like Furiosa comes out, it flies completely under people's radar. And it seems that Hollywood just isn't learning its lesson. Or perhaps it's learning its lesson too late. In all my videos, I joke about diving into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. But over the last 8 to 15 years, it really has been a dumpster fire. But as I mentioned in my second ever video on YouTube, Top Gun Maverick marked the beginning of the end for woke Hollywood. Sadly, it's taken the better part of the last two years to see us finally begin to emerge from the dark age of cinema. The first few good, fun movies are going to most likely suffer, like The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, like The Fall Guy. And Furiosa lies squarely in that camp. It was a good, fun movie. Did it need to get made? No, of course not. Furiosa's story wrapped up nicely in Mad Max Fury Road, but did I enjoy seeing the beginning of Furiosa's story? Yeah, of course. One thing that made Fury Road kind of infuriating for me to watch, pun absolutely intended, was Fury Road's complete lack of story in lieu of spectacle. Now, don't get me wrong, I like a big action movie as much as every red-blooded American does, but you can't tell me the exposition of Fury Road was better than that of Furiosa. And that's actually what I like best about Furiosa. It had a pretty great story. Furiosa's character development was pretty much spot on with what I consider a good character arc. She starts off weak, grinds, and gradually gains experience that ends up making her a badass by the time Fury Road comes around. You do that with every character, no matter their race or gender, and you get a good character that everyone can relate to. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention Chris Hemsworth's performance as Dementis. 
He was a formidable yet unpredictable villain. Hemsworth gave this character strength and gravitas that made him a pretty great villain. And that's something that Hollywood, and especially Disney, hasn't been able to give us, a good, compelling villain. With a few exceptions, all of Marvel's villains have been largely forgettable, but Dementis represents yet another shift in filmmaking. In the same way that I thought Top Gun Maverick marked the emergence from the Dark Age of Cinema, I have to say that Furiosa's villain marks the re-emergence of compelling movie villains. Will we get to see a Dr. No or Hans Gruber level villains anytime soon? Well, time will tell, but I think the future is looking pretty bright. It's really a shame that woke Hollywood's conditioning of audiences made Furiosa flop at the box office. Anya Taylor-Joy's career is kind of on the line since this is her first major solo outing in an action movie of this magnitude. I really do hope that her career doesn't take a hit because she's one of the few compelling young actresses out there today. She made the character into her own quite well through her stellar performance. At no point did she not sell the character of Furiosa to me. I mean, what else can be said of Furiosa that the critical drinker and nerd Roddick haven't already said? It's a good movie with good story and good character development that flopped because audiences can no longer trust a female lead not to be an infallible Mary Sue girl boss. And any time that a movie subverts those expectations is good because we can recondition audiences to get their asses back into seats at movie theaters. Like my boy Jesse Grant said about Marvel movies, you need to make a good six or seven movies that are very good in order to turn the ship around. Unfortunately for Furiosa, she was one of those six or seven good movies that didn't get rightly timed. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Furiosa? And did you think it deserved to flop as badly as it did? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.